Well, when we speak sm about smart cities and sustainable uh, cities of the future, we are talking health care and well-being. The Gulf region recognized the critical importance of investing in healthcare infrastructure and innovation to address the evolving healthcare needs in its own grown population. With a focus on ensuring the well-being and the quality of life of its citizens, the region is making a significant investment to enhance healthcare accessibility, affordability, and equality as well. And France historical know-how, and as we say, le savoir-faire, in the healthcare industry can be a game changer. With its renowned medical research, advanced technologies, and world class healthcare institutions, France brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table. To learn more about how to go towards a healthier future in the Gulf countries and how to address challenges and embrace opportunities, I invite our moderator for next panel, Sada Al Sabri, journalist in Monte Carlo Dualia and the experts in the field. Thank you. An absolute pleasure to be with you, with all of you uh, here today, and to be part of this uh, uh, panel. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, healthcare, uh, healthcare investment in the GCC region, and uh, this region which is uh, uh, moving to, uh, towards becoming uh, a knowledge, a technology, innovation, uh, economy, with all the massive evolution that uh, we have uh, uh, in front of us in the world, uh, especially after the pandemic. So we are talking about this region, which is uh, investing heavily in the healthcare infrastructure um, in order to uh, improve uh, the lifestyle uh, quality, to reduce uh, costs, to uh, enhance uh, uh, patient experience, uh, etc. So uh, we have here four panelists, experts, and specialists in, uh, in this sector. Uh, we will be um, talking, and they will be talking through their experience uh, in uh, operating, in uh, also in uh, uh, realizing uh, growth in this uh, uh, sector. And uh, I'm sure that uh, this panel will be very useful for all of us. I hope so. <laughs> Just I will keep uh, uh, getting uh, you reminded, uh, please, uh, dear panelists, that uh, of that time, uh, you have um, up to five minutes for each question. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I'll start with uh, Mr. Faisal Al Mutawa. Uh, who is the uh, chairman and CEO of uh, Ali uh, Abdul Wahab Al Mutawa Group, uh, uh, the largest uh, uh, pharmaceutical supplier in Kuwait? And he will um, introduce um, himself, his uh, uh, group, and uh, um, maybe f we want to know uh, more about the healthcare sector in Kuwait. And then I will uh, talk with uh, Mr. Uh, Mohammed Bishara, uh, and he 
uh, Sharif, sorry, <laughs> Sharif Bishara, and he is the CEO of Mohammed and Abaid Al Mullah Group and the American Hospital in Emirates. We have also with uh, us uh, uh, Joana Lerfel, uh, Delegate General of uh, French Healthcare Association, uh, France. And from uh, Sanofi, we have Daphne Richer Cooper, uh, head of bilateral relations. So I will start with you, uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Faisal Al Mutawa. Uh, maybe um, you can give us um, a healthcare uh, outlook in Kuwait. <clears throat> oh. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to be part of uh, this session. And to be, uh, I'm very, very happy and proud to be, uh, you know, talking in uh, uh, Golf uh, Vision 23 or Vision Golf 23. Health sector is, of course, uh, the most uh, dynamic and the most uh, potential sector, I think, in the world, uh, because people are aging, and as people age, they need more medicine, and of course, uh, the world is full of new innovations to, uh, to tackle most of these bad illnesses. Anyway, I come from Ali Abdul Wahab al Mutawa. It's a, it's a family business. Uh, it's a business that was established even before oil was discovered in Kuwait. And we, are, we have different uh, lines of business. Uh, one of them, an, an important part of our business, is the healthcare. We also have other lines like consumer goods and, and, uh, uh, and, and sport and fashion and others. <clears throat> in uh, in uh, Kuwait, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> we, our health sector is dominant by our government. And uh, private health is little in Kuwait. Kuwait uh, government uh, dominates more than 75% of the health sector in Kuwait. And uh, the health business uh, in Kuwait is, uh, is of course, uh, has huge opportunities as we think the government will have to release some part of its responsibilities because it cannot continue to do the way it is doing it right now. You know, when, when you have money, you can build a hospital, you can get state-of-the-art building, but what is important is how to staff it with the proper professional people that can run it. And, and as we are a developing country uh, with, with, a, with a population that uh, the, the aging, the aging is, a, is, is, is a lot, uh, in our population, the need uh, continues to be big and uh, and requires a lot of, uh, of business. Now, uh, you know, when uh, a government like Kuwait that has lived on oil income for quite some time, uh, the government, and not only Kuwaiti, but most governments in the GCC in the beginning, thought that they have to spend a lot of money to do almost everything. And now as uh, the thing expanding, uh, I think that the, 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 the government has to release a lot of its responsibilities to, uh, to the private sector because as government grows bigger, it gets more bureaucratic. And when it gets bureaucratic, it, its efficiency gets slower. So we're trying to advise the government and say it is much important for the health sector and for the people of Kuwait to privatize. So <clears throat> uh, Kuwait's uh, budget for, for the health sector is quite large. It has uh, something like uh, two point something billion KD or about more than seven billion, more than seven billion dollars. For a population of 4.2 4, 4 million, 
is is huge, and, uh, and this is uh, see, almost six percent of our GDP, and that is double in percentage terms than any developed country. So we have a very huge budget in, for the health sector. So that's why we say it's much better for the government. They can, if they privatize, because they can increase efficiency, they can decrease expenditure, and uh, improve uh, improve the, the health care of, uh, of their patients. So that is, in, in brief, the situation in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. And I will let... Uh, yeah, I, I know you have a lot of stories to tell us today, but maybe later, especially about the uh, French uh, Kuwaiti cooperation and the healthcare sector. Um, actually, in the, at maybe first glance, looking to the GCC region, we could feel that it's a homogeneous uh, market, but there's a lot of... Uh, or several uh, uh, distinguishing factors between uh, each uh, country in the GCC region. For example, regarding Emirates, most of uh, reports are talking about a healthcare sector with uh, an important component that uh, could allow, or that allow investors, operators to provide, uh, our providers to invest in the innovation and research. Um, high, uh, high quality or high growth, uh, uh, high sustainability sector uh, that is attracting even talents. Uh, also, maybe uh, Mr. Sharif uh, uh, Bishara could tell us uh, more about this uh, sector in Emirates and what uh, added value could the uh, French cooperation uh, add to uh, or bring to uh, Emirates? Yeah, first of all, thanks, and it's my honor to be here, but when we are talking to, uh, about Emirates and Dubai, it's a totally different story. Emirates and Dubai, not only in healthcare, we are in Emirates who believe in vision and planning. What's going on right now in Emirates has been planned for it for years ago. In 2017, and before the pandemic, and at that time, the whole world that in terms of technology and innovations, it was behind 10 years or 10 times in compared to other sectors. At that time, United Arab Emirates and Dubai, they set the vision on the investment of technology and AI. They set the first minister of AI. They increased the ex their expansion in healthcare and technology almost four times. That's why when the pandemic, it's attacked the whole world. We are in Dubai, we're totally ready. We never close our border against anyone. We open, I remember, I was have the owner, I'm not Emirati, I'm Egyptian, but I had the owner at that time to be appointed as the disaster and crisis committee by the government of UAE and Dubai. And I surprised that the first day when we met, they, had, they predict about exactly the number of cases that might, be, that might be increased, the number of admissions, the ICU, it's everything. So we will prepare in terms of the consumables, healthcare workers. We never suffer for a day. That type of country, which had the visions, it's attract any, uh, any school of medicine or any investor to come and invest in UE, and on the other side, it's opened the doors for all the medicine school all over the world. We am not talking only about American hospital, right now I'm talking about United Arab Emirates. We have American hospital, we are affiliated with Mayo Clinic Rochester, but we have Cleveland, we have King's College, London, we have Medi Clinic from Switzerland, but we don't have yet a French hospital. And you guys are very strong in certain specialties, especially in cancer. Where is the French expertise in cancer that should land on the, on the land of Dubai or the Arab of Emirates? UAE is open for everyone. UAE is open for all the nationality. One of the main advantages that I'm seeing in the Arab of Emirates, that all of us, all the people that are living on the land of UAE, they believe on the visions and the strategy of the government and the leaders. So all of us on the same directions. 
despite by color, religions, and we never ask each other where are you from. I told you that before the session. So I believe there are many lessons learned. We can give it, and there are many advantages and benefits. We can get it from the French healthcare system. At the end, the French healthcare system, it's now for centuries, it's not just for 40, 50 years. So it definitely has an advantages. We should get benefit out of it. But how? When we deal, so my advice, when we deal with a country like UAE or Dubai, they have a vision, because we believe the vision, any plan like the GPS, you, have, you should set the destination first, then choose the direction, which is your strategy, then press start. It's not the opposite. So what we need exactly of the French system, healthcare system in UAE, whether we need to send our expertise, there is a plan for it. Whether we need to increase the collaboration, there is a plan for it. Especially that the UAE economy, it depends on private sectors. The majority is private hospitals. So at the end, I'm looking for the profit, which is different system. That's why, for example, in American hospital, we depend on the American system. But on the other side, there is a very strong governance risk quality bodies. So it works hand to hand. So let's first of all set the vision, what we want to achieve, what's our goal, then we can start and to build and draw our plan and strategy. In terms of research and technology, it's very interesting that, as I mentioned, UAE is almost dependent on private sectors in terms of healthcare. But they're quite developed a little bit and advanced in research. How the government convinced the private hospital to invest, to invest in research. How mean American hospital? I have a couple of research centers. One AI, we set the first AI research center in the region with Cerner in the US, and it helped us a lot in the pandemic in terms of the admission and it was the mortality rate. And it was the minimum, seriously. And as I said, the research cancer research center was one of the big medical This is one of the things I think we need to look at it and study and studying well and take it from there and build a new success story of the French healthcare system in GCC. And to be honest, I, I hear an idea of the visiting doctor. It doesn't work in UAE, for example. The number of visiting doctors, it's reduced day by day. We need the French healthcare body to be present or represented on the land of the United Arab Emirates. That's my advice. Thanks. Thank you. It's very clear. I, I, I think maybe Joanna Lerfel uh, uh, from French Healthcare Association could uh, answer this, <laughs> this question. Why uh, uh, French um, uh, healthcare um, is no, it's not um, present in the GCC, or maybe in the UAE, in the Emirates maybe, especially? Do you see? In general, and, and Emirates especially. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to, to introduce uh, briefly what is French healthcare. Uh, so it's a, it's a public brand owned by the French Ministry of uh, Europe and, uh, and um, International Affairs under the banner of Choose France. And the aim of, uh, of this public brand um, is to, uh, to put every actors of the French healthcare ecosystem together to, to offer a uh, a collective answer to the to the needs. Um, many companies are already uh, present in GCC's region, uh, even in, in the Emirate. But what is also important to to, um, to to see is that in France we have a very very old and very strong presence in health, and so we define uh, the the value chain of health. Uh, very widely, we have uh, hospital builders that are already present in uh, in Bahrain, for instance. Uh, we have uh, uh, Sanofi, which is a, a part of the French healthcare uh, value chain. We have medical devices producer. We have for sure doctors uh, with many many collaboration through uh, excellent uh, excellent hospitals that are amongst the best in the world on their specialties. Uh, we have many, many different uh, kind of uh, French actors that are that are already there in GCCs. Um, it's true that uh, 
we we would like to to uh, to increase uh, the the companies would like to increase their presence because we do have many um, uh, similarities similarities in the approach of health. If you check at the uh, recent uh, vision plan from the different countries of GCCs, you see that, for instance, the countries are willing to put patients in the center of the vision of health, which is something that, uh, as uh, Sherif Bechara has just said, we, we do have a, a very strong and very old uh, health ecosystem. And we do have this vision of passion first, which is very important for French people uh, for French professionals in the field of healthcare. And if we do export health, we would like also to have an health that is uh, as we understood it, so not as a business good, not as a product you can sell, but pretty much has a common good. And this vision of health is very important uh, for French people in the general field of health. Um, as, uh, as Faisal Al Mutawa also said, uh, many cooperation are between uh, are through the private part, and many French actors are also looking at PPPs and how they could build up relationship with the different GCC countries. So I would not say that we do we are not present. I agree that we could increase collaboration because it's very important for. French healthcare ecosystem to have more relationship with uh, the GCCs and also in a vision where um, it's important for French people to not see GCCs as a market but more as a um, field of opportunities and field of collaboration partnerships. Um, for instance, the, one of the um, very, very strong assets of French when they are working on healthcare uh, a project is that you will have a product for sure, but we do not sell only the product. We sell everything that goes around with the product, uh, trainings, um, maintenance, and in order to, to set up collaboration. Uh, we could have seen that in many different projects around GCCs, and it's something that French could uh, bring to the countries, um, a strong partnership. We do not want so much because it's not on our consideration of health. We do not want to do one-shot projects, but we would like to set up partnerships, relationship for the, for the long term. But uh, I would agree with you that we should be, uh, increase our presence and we should set up more collaboration together. <laughs> Maybe the pharmaceutical uh, sector is uh, present more in, uh, in the GCC. Uh, uh, Daphne uh, Richie Cooper, uh, the head of bil bilateral relations in Sanofi. Sanofi, uh, Sanofi is, uh, began its uh, operations in the GCC in the uh, 70s. And maybe you could uh, uh, describe the Sanofi experience and expertise in the region. Yes, well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, so to answer some of these uh, questions that you've raised, um, indeed, Sanofi is a French uh, multinational company pharmaceutical company. We're headquartered in Paris. We have 90, uh, we're present in 90 countries and we are present in the GCC since the 1970s. Um, so we're engaged in the research, the development and the production of a, a wide range of pharmaceutical products and vaccines and our portfolio of um, products in diabetes, uh, cardio cardiovascular, uh, rare diseases, consumer healthcare uh, vaccines is made available to, to the patients uh, throughout the region. Uh, so we're mainly playing on the public market. Uh, we answer uh, public tenders. Um, I would say it's 90% of our um, revenue in most of the countries in the region and um, the, the remaining 10% 10, 10 uh, we make on, on, the, on the private market. Um, we are leaders in insulin and vaccines in, in your region. Um, and as Joanna rightly said, we go beyond just supplying medicine. Um, what we try to achieve in most countries is to partner with authorities, health authorities, to go beyond just providing uh, medicines and, and vaccines. So we, we do provide trainings. Um, for example, we uh, recently in 2021 launched a partnership uh, with the Dasman Diabetes Institute. 
um, in Kuwait um, to to train patients uh, how to you know to ensure that they um, they have treatment adherence um, that they follow the treatment uh, the right way um, we have set up and I will talk a bit more about that later on. In Abu Dhabi, we also recently uh, launched a new partnership with the authorities. So everywhere we operate, we always try to, to go beyond just distributing um, and selling medicines. Uh, that's the first point. Um, then in terms of contribution, I think it's uh, important also to to mention a key point that um, that you did raise, uh, Mr. Al Mutawa, on on the um, diversification of the economy, I think that healthcare is indeed a sector with uh, you know promising growth in the region, um, and um, and our goal is really to to be a partner of the authorities in diversifying the economy. So if we look a bit more specifically at um, Saudi Arabia, for example, we've been there since the 1970s as well. We have over 500 people working there. Um, and, and we do see ourselves as a partner of the um, implementation of Vision 2030. Um, and we do so, indeed, as I said, by providing medicines. So just a few figures. Uh, we provide annually over 33 million packs or vials of treatments in the kingdom. Uh, and we have launched since 2019 over 37 uh, new products in Saudi Arabia, uh, answering you know, the um, the needs of the patients, uh, and also working hand in hand with the authorities in providing the treatments that um, are needed and contributing to uh, strengthening um, an already robust uh, healthcare system. Um, and as I said, everywhere we operate, we always try to work in partnership. So beyond just uh, programs in diabetes, we also work in the region in the field of rare diseases. We support um, early diagnostic of uh, rare disease patients because some, uh, some of the key issues facing most rare diseases patients is that you can sometimes w wait between 10 and 15 years between, uh, before being rightly diagnosed. So I think this expertise that French companies like ours, spe specifically in the field of diabetes, vaccines, and rare diseases, where we're recognized leaders, can definitely contribute uh, to strengthening um, to strengthening healthcare systems in the region, both via the quality of the innovations that we bring to the market, as well as the uh, different training programs uh, that we can set up. Uh, with the authorities uh, to ensure that patients in the region uh, benefit from the right treatments, also from the right uh, diagnosis uh, whenever needed. Thank you. Um, I, I will um, ask you, Mr. Faisal Al Mutawa, uh, about the partnership. Which, what, which kind of partnership you have already experienced in Kuwait with the uh, French uh, healthcare? Uh, uh, sectors or companies, and what are you waiting from this partnership? Thank you for this question. It's very important. <clears throat> As we have a lot of uh, French partnerships, especially in healthcare, and as I can read a little bit about the WHO Global Cancer Observatory, <clears throat> it said that the annual cancer growth rate in Kuwait is estimated to be 4.2% per year, 4.2% of the total population. This growth rate is almost double the global average of 2.2% per year in other countries. So the, the, the cancer uh, oncology treatment is very much required in Kuwait. And as we had lots of partnerships uh, with French companies, and as Kuwait keep sending these patients abroad for treatment, 
they used to send and st still are sending between six to 700 Kuwaiti patients to Gustav Rossi in here in, in Paris. And <clears throat> we came with the idea that instead of sending six to 700 Kuwaiti patients, and they're increasing every year to, to France, and each one comes with two of his relatives, it is expensive, it is difficult, it is not very easy to the patients themselves. So we said, why don't we try to get Gustav Rusi in Kuwait instead of sending 700 patients to, uh, to France? So that came with the idea, and then we, the, the Council of Ministers in Kuwait agreed with, the, the government of Kuwait agreed with the, the French government that they will invite Gustav Rusi to come and work in Kuwait. And then <clears throat> Gustav Rusi made a study, and we were selected to be their partners in Kuwait. And we established our joint partnership in Kuwait. We paid the capital and everything. And Kuwait government has said that they will provide the, the hospital headquarters for the next five years for the hospital until this partnership builds its own hospital. Unfortunately, because it is bureaucratic, because it is difficult uh, to, to change, uh, take from the health sector a, a big part of their business to the private sector, and for other, so many other reasons, it did not work. I think, although that experience and that uh, case uh, was not successful due to different uh, reasons that uh, I will take very long time if I want to go into details. <clears throat> I th still think that sooner or later there will be a lot of opportunities for specialized hospitals like Gustav Rossi to come to Kuwait and operate. The government of Kuwait has to give in some of its responsibility, especially in, 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 uh, in specialized uh, medicine. Gustav Rossi is one of the most famous and the most highly reputable hospital in, in, in oncology. I have seen them <clears throat> myself, although I am, not a, uh, I am not a specialist, I am not a doctor or a pharmacist, but I have seen how the process uh, of treatment and how they go through uh, and the success rate of all Kuwaiti patients. So from this podium, I am asking specialized French hospitals that we'll be very happy to cooperate and give it another try. We, maybe we've not been successful in the first case. We will continue to try because that is the, the end, must be more efficiency, better proficiency, less cost, and better treatment for the patients. So I think it's coming. Thank you. But what are the, the factors of this success? Well, you see, it's not easy to change a government that controls everything to give its authority to the private sector. It takes time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bureaucrat. That, uh, you know, privatization, especially in healthcare, is not easy to change uh, to change hands. Uh, there are so many uh, interest groups and so many uh, power positions within the government that some governments think that they can do everything because they have money. Of course, money is only one part of the, uh, of the problem. Uh, it is proficiency, it is uh, efficiency, it is management, it is proper thinking of of how to develop in the future. It's many, many, many reasons that I don't want to dwell into it now, and I don't want to bore you, but it is, it is coming. Um, whether uh, tomorrow or the day after, I can see it is coming in Kuwait, that the, to the extent that, you know, only four or five months ago, the government did invite Gustav Rossi to Kuwait, and a representative did come uh, six months ago to Kuwait, and they were talking. But of course, Gustav Rossi said, 
We've already tried. Now we are a little bit hesitant. And, uh, you know, few difficulties. When you, when you fail one, ta- one day, uh, not everybody wants to step again. Uh, but we, as Kuwaitis, believe in our country. We believe that change is coming in the health sector. And, uh, and we will continue to, to, to search for proper French partners, you're most welcome, to come and we'll be very happy to cooperate with uh, whether it's French hospitals or French pharmaceutical companies or, or elsewhere, although we have quite a few of them already, but more is better as always. Thank you. Thank you, great. Uh, let's talk about the um, <laughs> know-how transferring and digital health uh, solutions as the uh, the GCC healthcare sector uh, uh, wet- has witnessed uh, uh, a lot of adva- advancements in digital solution uh, solutions. Maybe uh, Mr. Sharif Bishara could um, give us examples uh, in the field. First of all, uh, I can say that we are lucky in UAE, different than our neighbors a little bit. Because, because in UAE, the, the government there are very flexible. We are very dynamic. We believe in PPP, public-private partnership. We go hand in hand. We have one vision, one goal. And especially when it comes to technology. You can imagine the approvals that require for any private sector to set research center operating by AI. What do you expect from all the countries and our neighbors with that long process that should face that didn't happen in UAE? The government in UAE, they set the interest on the private, the private sector before the government. They want us to succeed. They believe that the growth of the country, it will never achieve if the private sector. So when it comes to technology, we shouldn't underestimate the sensitivity of the medical record of the patients. And, we, and when we set as a private sector and we say that we need to expand and invest in technology and AI in this area, they immediately start working on the other side in parallel to set the rules and the regulations that regulate the confidentiality of the, of the patient record. UE is really dynamic. We really move extremely fast. Right now, Ahna, we set, for example, for the, the, the last deal that I have it in American Hospital, we started on an oracle for the AMR system and the ARP system. The technologies, that, the, the technologies that we have, it was intuitive. The Da Vinci robot. And we are the first center out of US accredited for uh, robotic uh, surgeries. Okay. And I know, for example, France, it's really advanced in robotic, really advanced. So I, I really dream, if I, if I see these centers in Dubai, for endoscopy, it's there. Arcade, it's one of the most famous, and it's there okay. for, for the robotics. So what I mean, it's, it's very simple. And as uh, Mr. Faisal Mutawa, when he raised about a specialized hospital, why it's a specialized hospital? Because again, we're back to the same point. It's all about vision and strategy. Healthcare, as a healthcare provider, I'm talking, when I say healthcare, I mean the hospitals. It's one of three strategies. To be a specialty leader or one-stop shop or multi-branded. The future for a specialty leader, you are perfect in what you, you will never be good in everything. So I think we need to set the priorities. We want to go and we, in terms of technology, I think not the opportunities that we have already, the future is coming if we can set 
and I can tell you, you are a public and, and a government body, an innovative hub for healthcare. And I'm more than happy as a group of, of Muhammad and Abed al-Mullah, and as an American hospital, and as the Dubai government, and I, I, I know very well they are open for that, we can explore the opportunity and set up an innovative healthcare innovative hub. That's still in Dubai, we need it. And you already, guys, you already advanced on it. So can, we can explore that. And inshallah, next year when we come, we announce that we start the first startup in X diagnostic, in X treatment, or it's under trials or whatever, but let's start. And we as a private sector are open for that and ready can for investment. We have no problem with that. And let's build again a success story between UAE and Dubai and France. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Joanna Lerfel, that leads me to ask you, how do you foster the culture of innovation and research in the GCC region and health sector, healthcare sector especially? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say, uh, gentlemen, uh, I will be more than happy to, to, to work on both subjects and to bring companies and innovative companies and maybe we can try to make everything happen. So next year, uh, we could say that we already started. Yeah. <laughs> but we will, I will definitely uh, keep in touch and uh, introduce you to French companies with experience, uh, both in the UA and both in, uh, in, um, in Kuwait. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, um, I do think, uh, I, I mean, in every vision plan of uh, the GCCs and on the day-to-day -day, uh, operation, you could see a lot of innovation. Um, I will take some examples, but uh, if you visit the digital hospital in Riyadh, it's something very, very strong uh, with a very good understanding of Ashen problematic and a very good realization of digital health. Uh, in the UA, for instance, uh, you have multiple uh, incubator and Up71, for instance, which is a very strong uh, startup accelerator. And you see that the different countries has um, uh, taken into account innovation as a way to, to give a better services, service to, to patients. And that's really interesting, and that's also really close to the French vision of innovation. Um, you could, I mean, for in, you, you, you will have a lot of, uh, if you take Saudi, for instance, you will have a lot of medical desert, and also in the new Giga project, you will need to, to offer the possibility to have a doctor uh, close to the patient, and um, it, it's a high level of service that is willed uh, to, 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 be, to, be, to be given to the patient in every different areas. So the digitalization is really understood as a, a way to, to better serve the patient and a way to be closer to the patient. And it's also why it's uh, very innovation in GCCs and in France have really close roots. Uh, because it's how could we uh, could we offer uh, a, a, bet, a best uh, presence? Uh, how could we offer the best medicine for every patient? Uh, if if you take the UAA, it doesn't matter if they are citizen national or if they are living there, uh, they would like to to offer a very good level of health for everyone, and it's something which is really important. It's innovation, but um, it's innovation that, is, that has roots on people and not only just on technology and is this linked to the, to, the, to, the, to the roots. Thank you. Maybe we could complete this uh, answer with uh, uh, Daphne Richet Cooper from Sanofi about the missions of uh, um, um, how no, yeah, uh, maybe knowledge transfer uh, you, you have already uh, uh, expertise and that. GCC <clears throat> yes, um, thank you. I touched upon it in my previous answer. So as I said, we're doing partnerships with governments. Uh, we and we re recently signed a partnership with uh, Abu Dhabi um, to develop research uh, in four strategic areas. So diabetes management, vaccines, um, hematology and oncology, and rare metabolic diseases 
as well as on uh, digitalization um, and clinical trials. Um, going back to how we foster this uh, culture of innovation, I think one of the first steps is really including countries where we work in the global map of clinical trials. Um, so we've been doing it in uh, Saudi Arabia for the past um, decade. We've run over 30 clinical trials in uh, KSA. Um, and KSA is also um, running uh, several clinical trials for some of our uh, new global drugs. Um, so that's one way. Uh, another way that we foster this culture of innovation is uh, by localizing the production of our medicines in some of the countries where we operate. Um, and so in the kingdom, we are also looking at expanding our, um, our industrial footprint in the field of insulin production and, um, and vaccines. Um, and last but not least, um, we also work on uh, training physicians. Um, and this goes really in, into your shop, <laughs> French Healthcare. Um, because Sanofi is, um, is supporting a fellowship program uh, between um, the Emirates and the University Hospital of Nice. Um, and, and we are training, I, I think um, we're supporting the training of surgeons in Nice. Uh, so this was a partnership signed a, a couple of years ago, I think. Um, so really any... any we are really looking and seeing partnerships um, with, with authorities as a way of uh, bringing our expertise or part of the expertise that we have um, and really listening to the needs that authorities and countries have because um, it's really based on the local needs um, that, we can, um, that we can support the ambition of the, these you know, countries, the authorities, and, and the government. Thank you very much. Maybe just a, a point from you, uh, uh, Joanna, about the competitiveness of uh, uh, French uh, partnership comparing to American one, maybe, or other uh, investments uh, in healthcare uh, system. Uh, thank you. That's a, a tricky question. <laughs> no. Yes, it's unique, <laughs> this partnership. No, uh, what I could say is that, uh, I mean, um, well, France has many advantages uh, and has many disadvantages, and we, we have learned how to use this disadvantage to, to make it something uh, great. Um, for instance, we have a very old healthcare system, so we have centuries of experience in treating patients everywhere, in very big cities and in desertic areas. Um, we, do, we, we are also a country made of cultures, uh, multicultural, multicultural background. So we are also able to and willing to understand uh, other, other country, other people, um, and to, to give them the best service we can do. And that's why also I, I do want to talk a lot about partnership and not only market. It's not like taking, giving, you know, it's very, very much working hand in hand. And also, if you look, if you compare France to different, part of, uh, different competitors, you will see that we are a smaller country um, with, uh, with uh, less people, less inhabitants. But we do also have many different universities. We train a lot of doctors, engineers, business people, uh, accountability. We have a lot of different expertise that we are able to put together. And as we have a small inter uh, internal market, we have to, uh, to trade with other country and we have to, to foster collaboration. So this like disadvantage, I would say, to be, to be smaller and to be, uh, uh, have less a smaller market, it forces us to, 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 to grow abroad and, uh, and work with other country. And so, so that's something that we are working on. And 
we don't see other people as only market. We see them as uh, partners. We can set up collaboration and learn from each other. And I would say that's why we are, especially in the field of health, uh, the, the right partner. Thank you. A comment maybe from you both, uh, Mr. Bishara and Mr. Mutawab, because you have negotiated with uh, different kind of stakeholders. So what is unique in a French partnership and healthcare uh, system? Uh, okay. okay, let's, we have to admit when it comes to healthcare, the patient comes first. But I cannot treat patient just by my heart. French doctor, they are very emotional, as you said. It's not a product that we sell. We should treat our patient. Americans combines the commitment to the patients and the way that they should manage the whole sector. In American hospital, yes, the majority is American board certified or Canadian, but also I have a number of French doctors, French board certified and UK board certified. They are different. For example, during the pandemic, I give you an example. During the pandemic, we decided to set up the first hospital, to convert the first hospital to an institutional isolation for COVID patients. All the European board refused because it doesn't work. There is a standard. The hospital treat COVID patient, you should do one, two, three, four. When I asked the American doctor, they told, they answered me, let me show you see. Pandemic, it's a war. And we should deal with it. And we should get it done. It should done. And we set up the first hospital, 390 bed, within 18 hours, fully equipped. And it's on the media. Nothing is wrong or correct. And that's the advantage, again, of, of the jurisdictions that I'm working for right now. How to combine and they get the advantage of the really ethical French doctor and get him on board and adapt the culture a little bit for the new challenges for the sectors, which healthcare is really dynamic, as I mentioned at the first questions. And now we figure out at the, in, in healthcare, it's uh, behind, t t uh, 10 times behind the other sector, not in pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical is really advanced. Healthcare, not. Hospital, not. We're really behind. So I think we need to work all together and capitalize on the advantage of the French or their European expertise, which is, which is very good. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Faisal Mutawa, based on your experience with the uh, uh, stakeholders from France or from other countries, uh, the investors, uh, operators, or, uh, or supplier, the, there is, what's the difference? I just want to say that the health sector, from the business point of view this time, not from the health, this is, uh, this sector is probably one of the highest, has one of the highest potential in, 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 in other business sectors. As I said in the beginning, the world population is aging. And what happened in the pandemic showed us how requirements that can jump in, in no time for business opportunities. I know the Americans have taken most of the advantage by getting ahead of others in, in, in the vaccines, but there are huge opportunities from now on in the health sector, whether it is in the pharmaceuticals or whether it's building hospitals or whether in, 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 in research and development. Um, as a, somebody who's working and having business in the health sector, it is 
dynamic. It is, uh, has lots of potential. It is improving every year. And, and uh, we're, we're going to invest more and more in the health sector as we grow because this is the best business that helps people and creates more profit for them. Thank you. So there's a place for, for everybody, <laughs> for every investor. In UAE, place of everyone. We are welcome all the school of medicines, especially the, the old developed schools like French school, the medicine school, school of medicine, definitely. It's mm. open and more welcoming. Thank you very much, our panelists, uh, for this discussion. And thank you for all of you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.